Superman Our Words at War is an expensive crossover storyline that significantly impacts the DC Universe. The story begins with the sudden appearance of Imperius, a cosmic being with the power to annihilate entire planets. His goal is to destroy the universe and rebuild it from scratch. And he starts his campaign by sending massive probes to Earth and other worlds, causing widespread destruction. As the threat becomes apparent, Superman and the rest of Earth's heroes, including the Justice League, are called to action. They are joined by various other superheroes, such as Wonder Woman and Batman, as well as unexpected allies like Lex Luthor, who recognizes that the survival of the planet is at stake. The heroes face immense challenges and numerous battles as they attempt to stop Imperiax's relentless advance. Throughout the storyline, several key characters undergo significant developments. Superman finds himself at the center of the conflict grappling with the immense responsibility of protecting the Earth and its inhabitants. Steel, Aquaman, and Hippolyta are among those who face grave dangers and make considerable sacrifices in the fight against Imperiax. The war reaches its climax in a cataclysmic battle that spans across the universe. The heroes launch a final, desperate assault against Imperiax hoping to stop his plans once and for all. Despite their combined efforts, the battle results in significant losses and changes for many characters. Superman, in particular, is profoundly affected by the events, facing personal losses and the heavy burden of leadership. Ultimately, the heroes manage to thwart Imperiax's plan, but the cost is high. The storyline leaves a lasting impact on the DC Universe, with many characters reflecting on the immense sacrifices made and the enduring scars left by the conflict. Superman Our Words at War is remembered for its epic scale, intense battles, and the deep emotional and physical toll it takes on its characters. Hey you everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today, we are taking a dive into one of Superman's epic storyline, Our Words at War. The storyline is what gives McFarlane the inspiration in designing this new Superman action figure. Let us start with the packaging. The front of the box prominently displays McFarlane Toys Digital DC Direct Superman. It has a huge clear window where we can see the figure and all that comes with it. On the right side, you'll see McFarlane Toys Digital DC Direct Superman Our Words at War. The left side continues the window display and also says McFarlane Toys Digital and instructions and QR code promoting their McFarlane Toys Digital line. Finally, the back of the box features artwork of Superman from the comics. That's it for the packaging. Now let's crack this open and see if McFarlane did justice to this version of Superman in action figure form. The figure stands at 7.5 inches or 19 centimeters. As for the accessories, it comes with the standard McFarlane art card. McFarlane Toys Digital Redemption card. Standard McFarlane Toys Digital Base or Stand. Two alternate open hands and this eagle which to be honest McFarlane gave us the, a good mold of an eagle to be honest but there's no way to interrupt this eagle with the figure 
I mean, if you will look at both his hands, McFarlane did not even do any effort to put anything in there to peg this eagle on him. If you will look at my, uh, my, my the part of my intro video, what I did is I just put him like put, put the eagle like that, which is weird. But to be honest, yeah, that's the only thing I thought of how I'm gonna interact this accessories to the figure. McFarlane is really self-destructing with stuff like this that they do. I mean, this is a very good mold of an eagle, but what's the point of giving us this eagle if it cannot interact with the main figure? So, okay, they gave us an eagle, so what am I going to do with this? Anyway, that's all for the accessories. Now let's have a look at the figure itself. This is an obvious reuse of the, the Dark Knight Returns Superman, which is one of their earlier releases. And to be honest, I, lo I love that wave. The Dark Knight Returns Superman, especially the fact that their build of figure is a horse. And as far as the mold of both the Superman and the and the Batman, they are very, very accurate to the art of the comic. So I love it. Now I was thinking why did they use this in the Words at War version? Um to be honest, I don't really have any idea on what that comic looked like, but if this comic art gives us an idea on the art of the comics, I guess it makes sense to use the Dark Knight, uh, the Dark Knight Return Superman body mold. I guess it is, it is compatible with it, and even the S with the black. Yeah, I guess I guess that's accurate. Anyway, since this is a reuse of that, I'm thinking that's focused at the head sculpt because this is usually the only thing that is new on the mold. And yeah, I, I actually like this Superman head sculpt. I think it is it is pretty compatible with the with the style of the body mold itself. And looking at the, the art, I guess that's the style that they are using on the comics. So I like it when they do that. So as far as the head sculpt is concerned, I do like it. Now for the body mold, I love the fact that the S symbol is a completely separate molded part. And then the belt is also molded. What I don't like actually is this black and red thing on its waist. I'm not sure if this is McFarlane's way of cell shading or does it really look like this in the comics. Guys, for you for for you who are aware of the words at war comic uh, storyline, is this how Superman's uh trunks looks like? Is it really black or is this just McFarlane's way of attempting cell shading? Personally, I actually love this uh Dark Knight Returns Superman body mold. It is actually one of the Superman that they release during the earliest earlier years of McFarlane DC Multiverse that I actually love. For me, it is actually one of the best Superman that they release. Um, but since this is one of the earlier mold that uh, they created, uh, my issue with this is that when it comes to articulation, it only has one single joint here in the elbow. So it has that and then it rotates here and it doesn't have a, a cut in the bicep. 
so honestly this is the only thing that i don't like with this mold but overall the rest i do there's really no surprise on the articulation of this one so let's do it fast for the head there's that you can look side to side you can look down figure can actually look up decently that's a pretty decent one for a flying character then he has a abdominal cut and a waist rotation which can lean back that far that's actually pretty good range but for leaning forward nah there's nothing there then they can do side to side now for the legs the thigh articulation actually works in this mold then double jointed knee but it can only reach that far ankle pivot toe articulation you can kick forward that far you can kick back that far so you can do the semi split in a way then you can also do the bend down so as i said the only negative for me in this mold is that single joint uh elbow and it has no bicep cut i wish that mcparlane though reusing their mold at, at least improve this earlier things that they do because they're kind of i don't know is this their is this their third year or fourth year anyway they're they're they've been handling the dc multiverse uh license for a while now so at, they should at least you know improve their mold as for the paint i love the dark shiny blue that they use because especially when you look at it against the light because the muscle definition actually it's actually I, i'm not sure if you can see it in the camera when uh when this blue uh this blue is against the light it shines a little and shows the muscle definition of the sculpt that they use i like that I actually like that and then i love that they put at least an s at the back of the cape even though it's black i'm not sure if that is comic accurate yeah so overall this is actually a pretty good looking figure overall i do like this figure i'm just really a little disappointed that they did not do any effort to interact this accessory that they made to the main figure i mean i wanted to display him with this eagle on his arm landed on his arm but yeah that i can do that so why market it with this if you're not gonna exert the effort uh, if you're not gonna exert the effort to actually interact it with the figure anyway ignoring that part because that's really the only negative thing that i see that i'm really dissatisfied with this that really disappointed me with this release but overall the figure itself looks good i know that there may be again there may be uh some people out there out there were not a fan of the dark knight body mold but for me actually i love it especially if the uh, the version that they're trying to recreate is accurate to the comic um, it is actually one of those wider mold wider body mold that they have for superman but yeah i honestly at first didn't really like it but when i had it at end did that I'm, I'm talking about the dark knight return superman i have to love it and same thing about this one when i have it on air, on hand 
it actually looks good especially with that with that glossy blue glossy dark blue paint job it just really looks good against the light so guys uh if you've reached this part of my video thanks a lot if you like my video please leave a like share and subscribe it really helped a lot and as always enjoy life and keep collecting